Oh, hi everyone and welcome to my channel again. I have done the test to see if I am autistic as I thought I was. So I'm first going to show you some beautiful images of our piece of land that we have and afterwards I will talk about the test and why I took the test and the story behind it. So keep watching. We are back at our piece of land and look how wild everything has grown. We are going to let it like wild grow and naturally grow again. It's good for the environment, it's good for the animals. So we are not living here yet, so it's good for nature. And look how beautiful everything has gotten. But your mama, I'm coming home to the place where I belong. But your mama, I'm coming home to the place where I belong. I am free, so free, like the flowers and the bee, like the bird inside a tree. Like a dolphin in the tree I fly high, so high Like an eagle in the sky And when my time has come I will lay me down and die And when my time has come I will lay me down and fly But ya mama, I'm coming home To the place where I belong But ya mama I'm coming home To the place Where I belong So that piece of land that we just showed you is going to be the place where we are going to live in the future we are going to build a house there and also i want to create like workshops and a safe place to like come together with parents at homeschool like us and i had the idea to also create like at that place uh, a safe place for kids uh, that are neurodiverse with autism adhd dyslexia whatever <laughs> um, to be able to feel safe and to have a place where they can completely be themselves however they represent without norms or have to's must be's uh, to fit in or to be accepted uh, because in our society when you're different um, the world is created for the neurotypical way of thinking and if you're beyond that, um, when you don't fit the box, you're the one to have to change um, instead of just becoming accepted of who we are. So, uh, I thought I was autistic. Um, and not for a super long time, like for a few weeks, I thought, I actually realized that I resonated with autism. Um, but before I got there and it's hard for me to all explain this because it's like a whole complete journey of realization after realization after realization of so many things and also like it became like a special interest of mine so I started like learning and learning and learning and learning about it and that was how I felt like think I am autistic and it started with my daughter when my daughter started her school um, before she did go to school I had no idea she was just like a little girl for me that was happy and bubbly she was normal for me she, and she is for me still uh, even though she is probably autistic um, she's not tested yet because I homeschool and why should I label her if I deep down know like she is autistic? It's super clear. Um, she's been to three schools um, and every teacher and every person that had contact with my daughter said, I think she's autistic. So 
uh, and teachers have well a little of knowledge of autism so um, yeah but I rejected it at that time because I had a negative association with labels uh, because as a child I got labels like um, they told me I was dyslectic uh, and there's nothing wrong with people that are dyslectic uh, because like Einstein was dyslectic too so they can be amazing people and they are mostly artistic and very smart too um, but because they said I was dyslectic which I was not um, I believed that I couldn't read, that I couldn't write, that I couldn't um, read out loud and so on. So I just stopped learning it. I didn't put the effort in it anymore. And as an adult, I still have difficulty writing in Dutch language because I write a lot of mistakes. And um, it's not because I was dyslexic, but I never really learned how to write properly um, and that because of a stupid label that didn't fit me and also because um, those labels no matter what label like dyslexia or autism or ADHD um, oftentimes gets approached from um, a point of view like you're getting treated like there's something wrong with you there's something missing, there's something you need to change, there's something... It made me feel like I was stupid. That I, there was definitely... Dif like I was different, there was some, something wrong with me and I was stupid. So I actually um, lost my hunger of learning and um, lost my, my self-esteem. So I doubted everything about me. Um, so yeah, so I had difficulty with labels because of that. Because I really felt like they just bring you down. And those label I would <laughs> those labels I associated with like being something wrong with you or being treated as stupid. So when they told me like my my daughter um, is probably autistic, I was like, no, there's nothing wrong with her because she was super smart she was two and a half years old she could already write down the alphabet she could walk since she was like 10 months old she was like saying could like count 200 in dutch and english she could uh, like shapes could call them in dutch and english all the colors and all the variations variation that's a hard word yeah, you know, the spectrum of all the colors. Uh, she could call them all and in English and Dutch. So I knew she was smart. So I would not want to take like a label that... And I don't think people that are autistic are stupid. But I was so afraid because I ended up in special education. You have to know that I have a background um, that's very difficult and hard. Um, I wasn't stupid either. I wasn't dumb either. And, and because oh, I'm all over the place because I don't want to offend anyone because I don't think autistic people are stupid in no way. Um, but that's just how I felt about myself without even knowing I was probably autistic um, and I have had difficulty in school and similar difficulties that my daughter has. One of them is like being very perfectionist, perfectionistic, yeah, you get what I mean, whatever, if, if it's wrong. <laughs> um, like I'm, I was a perfectionist and when I was learning something I expected of myself to be able to do it from the moment I learned it. Like, I needed to do it right away, perfectly, which is impossible. So when I couldn't do things immediately in school, I gave up. Also, when I was in the classroom, um, 
First and for all, when the teachers were talking, I saw their mouth moving. I didn't hear what they were saying because I was overwhelmed by everything. I was observing the teacher and their behavior and their movement. Also was like watching the kids and was also feeling insecure and stressed and it was a lot. And the pressure in the classroom when we had tests or needed to like, um, like even if it wasn't a, an exam or a, a test, um, working uh, in the class was pressure because there were kids around me, they could be better than me, um, there was pressure from the teachers, also the pressure of like we, we, um, we don't do it like in America with A, F, C, you know, we rated, rated it with numbers from 0 to 10. Uh, and 10 like being the very good, 0 like very bad. So that adds up pressure and then the teacher um, commenting on mistakes, like they do that to help you. But for me it always was like feeling like um, criticizing and I felt like not good enough and doubting myself. So I always had like um, shutdowns in the classroom, I remember, like, freezing, can't do anything. And when I was at home with my mother, she could like explain to me, I trusted her, first and all, she was my mother, I trusted her, second, she knew me, so she knew how to uh, approach me and teach me, and then at home I was in another environment without like other kids without the pressure of a teacher that is a stranger for me and having to compete with other kids. Um, so when my mother teached me, I could do everything. Uh, it wasn't a problem. I just ha needed another approach. I was different thinking, so I needed another approach of learning and um, in school that wasn't available. So I ended up um, seeming stupid. The teacher said that, like, you are stupid, I don't want to put any attention on you, so I had to sit in the back side of the class. <coughs> so that's not helpful, especially when you're so young. So your self-esteem goes like... There are also, like, influences of home, like a stepdad that was very abusive mentally and physically, so that wasn't helpful either, calling me stupid every day. Um, so I ended up in special education and it's like in special education and I can only speak from my experience but I felt like they give up on those kids, they are not going to be achieving anything in life so we will prepare them to clean and to do like the dirty jobs in the world and they don't really focus anymore on your dreams or what you really want to be as an adult. So yeah, that was sad, <laughs> that was hard, that was not, but that's not what any child needs, um, especially when you are able to learn and don't have learning disabilities. Um, so, that aside, that's a part of why I decided to homeschool my daughter that had also difficulty in school, but when she was at home also bloomed open and flourished and learned. That did not make me think I am autistic too. Now, then there were things that my daughter did that people said like, she doesn't look us in the eyes. And I was like, so? I don't look you in the eyes. They don't know that I'm not looking into their eyes because I don't know how I learned it or I don't know. No one ever told me you're not looking into my eyes, but I never look into people's eyes. So I, I oftentimes hear people that are autistic say like, oh, they want me to look into their eyes and I have difficulty with it. But I just don't seem to like come over as someone that doesn't look you in the eyes because I look to the nose. <laughs> and how do I know I look to the nose? I always like 
my mother will probably uh, recognize this too. I'm always saying like, oh, those people have those this kind of nose and they have this kind of nose and they have a beautiful nose and they have a weird nose and they have a big nose and they have like a bigger nose than mine because I really have a witch nose. <laughs> so I'm always focused on the nose. And when you look into the nose, it's like the point, the, the middle point of your face. So they don't really realize that I'm not looking at their face, uh, at their eyes. And also, oftentimes I'm looking at the lips. How are they speaking? Um, when Corona came and they were like wearing masks, then was it like, where do I have to look to? Like, then I had to look into their, their eyes and I was like, looking at a mask. <laughs> getting annoyed <laughs> because I couldn't see their mouth because I oftentimes uh, I didn't realize I was doing it but I was like lip reading oftentimes so that was interesting but when they they told me like she isn't looking into her eyes I was like so uh, another thing is my daughter oftentimes does, does this stimming if you're autistic you probably know what Stimming is, um, and I do this since I could sit. Like I did this because it was regulating my feelings. It was relaxing. It feels good. It feels good. I have no other way to explain it. It just feels relaxing. Like it feels like when you're sitting on a swing or like a swing chair. Like it just feels good, especially when music is on or like you're thinking or. Like, it's it just feels good so when they say like yeah she's like rocking <laughs> and they tell it in a way like it's strange and i was like i'm always like what are you talking about this is normal i do this too like this is so normal <laughs> and then also the fact that she was very emotionally um had meltdowns and i was just like i understood her from a deeper level and um, I always was like yeah she's high sensitive like I am you know she only expresses it like I don't cry when I'm having a meltdown I get angry I express my meltdowns in anger and um, she's like crying and I recognize now that, that that was also a different thing that me and my sister had like my sister was uh, autistic too and she um, was like loud and crying and I am more like a shutdown type of person go inwards feel the stress and then uh, build up build up build up build up build up and then explode in anger um, and that was so, so horrible as a child and still as an adult I sometimes feel that and um, yeah, it feels like like a pressure inside of your body building up, and building up, building up, building up and it almost feels like physical that I'm going to rip apart it's not like I'm exploding and like having an anger uh, explosion it's more like I feel like I'm going to rip and as a child, I started hurting myself um, and started scratching my skin because I wanted to, the pressure to get out somewhere. It was horrible, that feeling. Uh, also, I started like cutting myself because it was, I, it felt like when that meltdown happened and I felt like exploding or ripping apart couldn't breathe anymore like like feeling a pressure on my chest and just also afraid of of hurting my sister or doing something breaking something and then being punished and feel worse again um, the only way out i felt like was hurting myself and also like your body when you hurt yourself uh, creates like hormones to um, like, it's like a painkiller um, and it also helps for your emotions so I never would say to someone do this 
don't. If you feel like this, please, please, please find help. Search for help. Reach out. I would never recommend this, but that's, I'm just expressing like that was what I experienced. Um, so, yeah. But still, I did not realize or um, felt like maybe I'm autistic. I just labeled myself high sensitive. Um, also, my special interest is spirituality. And I often um, felt like because I hear things way more intensely, um, also did like tests on frequencies and I could hear sound vibrations that normally only cats can hear. I always uh, tell, told myself like that's a spiritual awakening that's because you're evolving as a human and you're spiritually awakening your, your hearing. Um, I also like see more colors and colors are more brightly and I always felt like oh it's because I'm an artist I have a trained brain to see more bright colors in life also smell comes in like oh, certain smells like perfume like synthetic smells like from cleaning products soaps like everything that doesn't come from nature I gag on them like if someone wearing perfume I can go like and really like legit like not forcing it like not acting like this but really like starting to have a gag reflex because I just can't it's horrible I hate perfume <laughs> so much deodorant oh when people are like Yuck! <laughs> and I just felt like I'm high sensitive, so I'm high sensitive to smells. I just blamed everything on spiritual awakening, high sensitive, or when I had like fears, like social anxiety, um, anxiety to drive, anxiety to come outside, to anxiety in so many things. Most of it was social anxiety not daring to go outside, not wanting to speak to people, feeling like I want to be invisible um, at work, not able to communicate with others, um, also like small talk, bleh, I just hate it. I hate small talk. I just can't do that. I, I don't understand the reason and uh, it's so annoying. So. I always felt like, oh, that's probably because I'm more into spirituality and then you're more into like deep, meaningful conversations. Um, so I always had like blaming it on something. So how, I actually don't know how I came to the point. Oh, realizing that my daughter is aut autistic. Just that, yeah, that was it. Like. I always like pushed away like the label, um, but now that she's becoming older, um, she still like stims, she still like hand flaps, she still um, like has a hard time in school, um, and I homeschool not because I want to keep her home. I homeschool because I I I really feel like. Um, if she's going to school, she's going to either way end up in special education like I do or get bullied and traumatized. Um, and I, I really, really don't want that for her. Um, and I see that when I am focusing on her and her alone and helping her in her unique and special way because I get her and understand her, I see that she grows and she's so smart, way smarter than I was. I just have to tell her th something once and she knows it. Um, and also it gives me the opportunity to relearn everything. Like I first learn like in math and, and learn how to read, uh, to, uh, write certain words. And like I really study for my daughter and now I have a reason. I always had like a needing I, 
sorry, it's because I'm emotional that it's starting to come out um, harder. Um, but I always knew that I, I needed to be interested in something or had a good reason for something to learn. And now I have a good reason because I want to teach my daughter. Also my husband helps. Uh, and also there are so many things that you can uh, use from online. Um, so that's amazing. Um, and I started to realize that she is autistic. And I never tested her, but then I started realizing, uh, then, I, then I started studying about autism. What is autism actually, if my daughter is autistic? Um, but this autism, actually, I didn't want to believe that it wasn't, it was a disability because I don't see a disability in my daughter. I see possibilities in my daughter. She thinks different, she learns different, experiences the world different and expresses her different. But that's for me not a disability. That's just being a different kind of person with a different kind of ring. So I wanted to learn what it is. And the more I started learning about it, the more I realized, oh, but I do this and I think like this and I do this and I have this and I realize this and I recognize and I, and it's just, and I started studying and studying and studying and studying and started researching for weeks, months, until I came to the point like, I actually 100% know. I am autistic without doing the test. So I decided to make it official because I felt like I cannot go into the world and say like I'm autistic and then I'm, are you tested? Like no. Uh, and then feeling like maybe I'm just making it up. So I really w want to be able that if I tell someone because they need to understand a certain thing of me, like if I have a meltdown because something changes uh, in a situation like um, maybe they tell you like we're going to do this uh, today and then everything changes and I get like meltdown, meltdown for me is then getting angry and started verbally like getting angry and stressed and like like they see it as drama uh, and I want to be able to say like look I'm not doing this on purpose because you don't have control over it. I'm not doing this on purpose. I needed to understand myself and that helps to like when I feel the meltdown not to express it outside of myself anymore in anger. I'm now I'm able to like oh I recognize I'm having a meltdown and then go back to what happened and see like oh it's because of that change. And then being able to like separate myself for a second and just give myself what I need. Um, and it does not always, um, like I just know that I'm autistic now, recently. Um, so I'm still learning everything and still, but it's, it's a blessing. So I got tested and I got diagnosed, um, you probably already reckon. Um, getting tested was scary, it was stressful, I was so stressed, uh, like part of me was like, I know I'm autistic and I was afraid to not get the diagnosis, uh, because in women, in girls, it just is different, you can mask, you can socialize uh, and force yourself to socialize. Sometimes I can look into the eyes or you don't see that I'm not looking into your eyes. I do can, ex uh, I am empathic more than anyone uh, neurotypical, <laughs> I feel like. I am an empath, so I'm very empathic. Uh, I also can express certain feelings. Uh, and that's where he told me like, I'm doubting that you're autistic. And I was like, oh my God, seriously. Um, I can express three feelings and that's enough to say like you're not autistic, I felt like. 
um, but I can express that I'm angry because it's loud. It's freaking loud. I cannot ignore the fact that my body is telling me anger, anger, anger alert, anger. Um, also, when I'm sad, my tears are rolling over my face. I, I know that it's related to sadness. <laughs> also, Oh, my cam my camera fell out and I have no idea where I where he stopped but I was talking about like feelings um, like I feel like I feel the basic feelings like the anger the sad and the happy feelings because they are very loud and therefore the psychologist doubted the fact that I was autistic but um, the all, all the test results together for him it was clear that uh, I am autistic. Um, new, new medium, he told like medium, like not high functioning, not low functioning, but medium functioning. That means that, uh, um, and I know there's a thing about high and low functioning and autism being a spectrum, I'm still learning. So if I'm offending anyone, anyone I'm sorry. I just don't know how to uh, express it differently than how the psychologist told me. So, say with me. Um, yeah, like high functioning means that you're um, like have difficulty with communication um, and are a little bit more awkward in, in communicating and uh, are not able to express everything. Um, but in most things in life you're able to manage. Um, medium being like more socially, ex have more social anxieties, but also like have the stims, have like uh, difficulties in certain ways and need more help for certain things. Um, and then low functioning meaning you have more, you need more uh, help in your day to day life. So um, I'm in the medium, um, but I feel like that does not matter, it's just autism is a spectrum and maybe I'm high functioning in certain things and then low functioning in certain things or like in between, like it's a spectrum like they say. Um, so I don't know, I don't care about the medium, low, high or low, like whatever. I just, I'm autistic and I think different, I learn different, I am different. I always felt like an alien and now it's um, official, so yeah, that's my story. So from now on, um, it's part of me, it's part of my identity, it's part of my life, it's part of my day-to-day -day life and it's always have been. It's not that I got autism now, I always was autistic. I just didn't get a diagnosis uh, from a young age and that's nobody's fault, it's not my parents' fault or school's fault, it's just um, they don't really know a lot about autism yet, especially when I was younger, especially in women. Um, so yeah, that's, that's normal and they start to learn more about it and, and now, they start to, now they start to be able to like diagnose. Um, but yeah, everything about autism, like it's like yes, 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 in so many ways, and I, I, I hope I can somehow express that in different videos how everything relates and how it from a childhood relates, um, me playing alone on the playgrounds and being awkward with other kids, but like. I felt like I was a social kid, but I realize now that I was only social when I was talking about my special interests. And uh, also, in special education, every child is neurodiverse, so I felt like I was I fit in into that school, so that was kind of a blessing about it. Like, um, <coughs> So it wasn't all bad, and I'm not saying like my parents would make it a bad decision. Not at all, that was a good decision at that moment for me. But now in the future we need to like rethink and relearn about autism and um, children with difficulties in school. 
um, for several reasons, no matter what. They have abilities, they have talents, and they have gifts, and they have dreams that they deserve to. So it's now time to change that. And I hope I'm already being that change for my kids. <coughs> I have talked too much. Ah, I'm getting a sore throat. Um, but yeah, I'm going to leave it to this. I, I love having a YouTube channel because um, I may not be able to express my feelings and thoughts and interests in real life to people sometimes unless they are like me or spiritually. <laughs> Spiritual people feel more safe because they are like more open-minded for uh, different people because they open up and become different people too. Um, but my YouTube channel is a channel to express myself, my special interests, my life and maybe to inspire uh, someone that needs to hear what I have to share. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for staying with me if you're still here. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much and uh, see you in the next video. Mwah! And don't forget to subscribe and give me a like if you... Um, resonate with my story and maybe feel like autistic too just give me a thumbs up because you're supporting me too and that's very helpful we really need supporting each other so Mwah.